Well, this is the fourth year Wade has made the trip to Kentucky and to Salt River Outfitters, and each year he's come close to checking off the box of harvesting a velvet whitetail. But something felt different about the beginning of this year's hunt. As the fourth year came about, it was about preparation again, you know, shooting that bow, thinking about stands, studying the scouting camera pictures that were coming in from both the wireless cameras and, and from George texting me. Man, I was so excited, as I always am. We got camp set up, we're moving stands, and we're starting to track all of our deer on the scouting cameras and, and you know, where we're hunting, and it just was quiet, just eerily quiet on trying to find a good buck. As we join Wade in the field, he's already had an encounter with one shooter, but it never came into range. So with a new day and a new wind direction, he's heading off to a different stand. You know, yesterday was an awesome hunt. Um, you know, we got, got set up in there, had to wait for the sun to get down a little bit. It was really bright in there, but once that sun got kind of behind that ridge, the deer just kind of poured off that exact same ridge. They were coming in the food plot from different locations, different trails, but that little bottom that we were set up in this year was really funneling deer right almost underneath the stand. We had a fawn come in, a hurley bed down 25 yards away, and then some does, and then we had a nine point, an eight, some spikes worked their way through, and then as you'd expect, as those shadows got longer and the sun got really low, uh, a couple of good bucks showed up. One really good buck, looked like a 12, maybe a 13 point buck, kind of hung up about 50 yards away. Um, after a doe had blown kind of off in the distance, probably probably busted us somehow or another. And uh, he just kind of hung up and never came all the way in. Uh, but we've got scouting camera pictures of that deer, so we know he's a good one. Uh, but the wind's not really good for that set tonight, so we're going to go to a different location. Uh, if we don't kill one, we'll probably go back to that stand. Uh, but tonight we're going to be hunting near this marsh. This marsh is a place we've had success in the past. It's a giant food plot, lots of deer around it. I mean, it's just a a fun place to set even if you don't see a shooter so we're going to ease up into the stand get settled in we're 422 we've got several hours until it's going to get right but this time of the year i think you just need to get in there and let it all settle down and wait for those shadows to get long and hopefully those deer will show up is going to do on the properties around you. you you know there's just some hunts that are going to get busted and messed up and this is one of them you know the deer a couple bucks come out they could hear what was going on down there and they immediately turned and took off and, and that's other people's right you know they're just having fun but uh, you know we might as well climb down fire 
fire up the dinner and get ready for tomorrow. Well, we've certainly had our challenges on this hunt so far. We've, <laughs> we've had drones flying around. We've had people having picnics and parties. We've had hunters walk in on us. We've had uh, bird watchers come around. It's been a little bit of everything, but you know, in hunting, you're gonna have to overcome stuff like that. Other people are gonna use the woods just like you are, and you're just gonna have things that'll, that'll happen. We've all seen it. We're gonna see it again. It's just, that's just life and I'm gonna go up this creek here to another stand where the scouting camera shown some some bucks we had so uh, you know who knows what's gonna happen uh, a lot of deer are nocturnal I know one thing we will not kill one sitting at home on the couch we will not kill one driving back to Texas yet so we got a few more days we're gonna climb back up and stand see what see what we can make happen And so ends another evening hunt with little to no action, and the bucks are nowhere to be seen. When it's supposed to happen in deer hunting, it, it just does, in any kind of hunting, I think. And, you know, we, we had been talking to George, we felt like every deer was nocturnal where we were at. We, we had nothing showing up scouting cameras, we weren't seeing anything, and we decided to make a move. And to make a move when you're filming, you've got to go through a lot of the process. You've got to hang a new camera stand, you've got to move in. But we felt like it was the only option we had because I had a couple days left to hunt. So um, at 3.30, we're moving stands to a giant soybean field. This Kentucky hunt is becoming a race against time for Wade as the window to encounter a velvet whitetail is starting to close. You know, we're on day four or five of the hunt. Can you remember so they all kind of running together, which is cool because that means we're just having a good time. We've actually changed farms and locations where we've been hunting. We know all those deer out of velvet based on what scouting camera has shown us, and a lot of them are nocturnal. So we're going to go to a different farm. Uh, George and the team at Salt River Outfitters have really hooked us up, got us dialed in. We're going to set up in this big thicket right here overlooking a you know, bunch of farmer fields here. We've got alfalfa, we've got soybeans around us, got a corn pile out there as well. That's pretty typical in this area, and we're just going to let that sun go and see what comes in. Uh, I think I'm kind of at the point now where the velvet deer will probably be next year. I mean, I know there's a chance still, but I'd say it's less than 10%. Uh, so if a buck comes in, it gets me excited this evening. Uh, and my heart's pumping, you know, I'm gonna probably take him, but the, the clock has been ticking on the velvet deal.
I mean, I'm mid-body. I, I can't tell. I think I'm back a little bit, but what a great buck. What a great buck. I mean, he come from way up there in those trees. <laughs> he came from way up there in those trees and uh, worked his way all the way down through the soybeans, down here where it stand is to the, the corn pile. Probably 20 minutes of just sitting here. He finally turned, turned broadside. And I mean, that was my best shot running out of light. And I mean, I, I'm mid body, but I feel like I'm back a little bit. Um, I, can't, I mean, it's so hard to tell in low light like this, though. I mean, the arrow's still in him. You could see the arrow all the way in him as he ran all the way across the, the pasture. So, I mean, we're doing some damage in there. Um, I'm just kind of shook up. <laughs> I mean, we've hunted a long time in Kentucky and had lots of good encounters. And my legs are shaking. My knees are knocking. My, I mean, my hands are like just, just soaked. <laughs> I just hope I made a good shot and did did, did, did right by the deer. Um, man, I mean, it's intense when you get a, get a chance to, you know, bow hunt and hunt with anything really and get them in close and uh, go through that. You know, we've, we've made a lot of bad decisions and a lot of good decisions in our trips to Kentucky. Uh, sometimes we've outsmarted ourselves. Sometimes we just had great hunts, didn't get a shot. In my mind, I'm sitting here thinking, my God, the sun is going to set. And it's going to be another one of those hunts where we got a giant out here in front of us and we don't get a shot. And he finally turned and, and gave me my shot. And I mean, all we can do now is wait it out, wait it out, see what happens. I mean, right here is where it went down about 40 minutes ago. And, you know, he pretty much just turned broadside right here. We were up there. It's 27 yard shot. And, you know, you can see what happens when he goes over the hill. I mean, you can, you can all see the, the, you know, the arrow still stuck in him and uh, doing damage the whole way. I mean, Michael says when he played it back, he can see blood shooting out of him. I mean, that's a dead deer. Pretty, pretty confident. We're going we'll to give it a few more minutes and then we'll start, uh, start going that direction. Man, there's lots of nervous energy and George and the team from Salt River are coming down and some of his clients are there that I've become good friends with over the years and new friends are there coming from other farms that are hunting in the area. You know, they've heard I've taken a shot. But thank goodness you have that kind of an army of friends that share your passion. Uh, that want to be involved in it and want to share that moment because I'm telling you that's one of the coolest things about a camp. Um, one of the things I like about over here is we spread out and we start to search and man I mean blood and more blood and I mean these soybeans are painted red. Right, we can see the knock up here so we don't know if it's still in the deer or if it's come out but we're going to get up here and see in just a second on this trail. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh man, that's exciting. Look at that deer right there. Wow. Wow. Look at this buck. Holy cow. <laughs> Look at this buck. Still in velvet. Wow. Wow, what a bruiser. I mean, this has just been a, I have wanted a big velvet buck in Kentucky. It's a four year journey thanks to might be in a little bit too picky at times. So I guess it's paid off right here. George and his team have really, really put up with us for a while trying to get this done. And, and that's the end result right there. Yeah, that is a, that's a bruiser. Um, I mean, y'all saw it, how it all went down. I've been as shook up on this as just about anything I've been shook up on in the hunting world in a long, long time. That deer got out there. We got to watch him come across the field and it took forever to get a shot. And he's quartered away a little bit. Got, got it in there. You can see it all as he's running across there. And just thankful for this. This is pretty humbling for this kind of an opportunity. I, I, I was shook up and speechless up there and I'm equally as much now. I mean, that is a giant. Check it out how he's just now starting to come out of velvet on the tips right there. That's really cool. That is really cool. What a giant. <laughs> wow. Thank y'all. That was a pretty awesome moment right there. <laughs> I just don't even, 
you know, rarely do I get to where I have nothing to say, but I'm just about as humbled and shook up as I've been and for one. Wow. That's why you go to Kentucky and Salt River Outfitters right there. Chance at one of those. Man, as, as, as I go back on the whole process of this hunt and I look back on the friends and the, and the emotion and the time that we all spent with it, you know, and, and the new products we've been able to play with on these, these trips, the first one to this one, and, and the deer that Steve shot last year and the deer I got this year. And I mean, that's what deer hunting is, is supposed to be about, that whole process. The whole thing of everybody wanting to share and the successes and everybody under help, helping you learn from the failures. Um, this is going to be a hard four years of hunting for this kind of a deer to top. Um, the cool thing about it is I will be hunting again and again and again and again. And if I never top it, that's okay. But if I do, it'll sure be something that I don't know if my heart will be able to handle it. Actually, <laughs> as older I get, it might not survive that one. So, man, what a great time! Congratulations, Wade, on completing this four-year entry into the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries.